Carlos, uh, Steven will show us some work that he has done to upgrade uh, garden wall data. And then they would like to have a discussion about uh, what should be into the core, what should be a plugin, and yeah. So, okay, so let's start. <laughs> Uh, good morning. This, uh, this session is going to cover uh, two topics that are related. Um, the first is the absolute paucity of useful information in garden world and what we can do about it. And also, secondly, the format of the example financial results or reports that we're able to show to other customers or you know, prospective customers and other users. There's almost nothing useful in garden world for anybody in 2023. Even the data is 20 years old, it's just an embarrassment and it needs to be fixed up. And the marketing committee decided that that needed to be done about six months ago and, uh, and I'd offered to do the job and the imminent arrival of this conference caused me to do something about it. <laughs> so anyway, uh, so uh, and then the second part of the discussion it, it, it is related in that uh, it, this is all about what we need to do to change things that we have in Garden World or in, in IDMPS so that we can put our best foot forward and, and uh, be able to uh, give the best experience to users and, and, and new users. So th this first slide is uh, it's, it's what I think we need to aim to be able to have available in Garden World so that somebody who's coming to coming into Garden World and maybe running a financial report that's in there sees something that actually makes sense. So to try and get an idea of well what, what would make sense, I just grabbed some example accounts from KPMG corporate and this shows what their recommendation is for uh, for what accounts could and should look like. So if, if we could make Garden World deliver a set of accounts that look something like this, I think we would be on our way to have something that wouldn't cause us embarrassment when new users logged in to have a look at it. So we don't need to go into this in great detail, but if you could scroll down a little bit for me. My laptop won't talk to this thing, so we're having to double. <coughs> so. Just to give a, a bit of an idea, that, that these, these are all the kinds of things that an accountant would be expecting to see as a, able to be reproduced from his accounts if we, if we were trying to pitch to him about, you know, we're able to do what you need to have done. There's another tag that's on uh, for a balance sheet and then we can go on to something else. Anyway, this was, this was what the, the intention was to be able to produce something that looked like a published set of accounts and uh, and here's what uh, uh, what they reckon the balance sheet should look like. Interesting thing on, on the P&L was that uh, you see that their recommended layout is that they show all revenues and gains as positive numbers and all expenses and losses as as negative numbers, and you can just then sum them together. And the change that Carlos made, I think it was quite recently, that allows us to multiply numbers inside the report, um, inside the reporting columns, uh, enable if columns or lines. I don't remember which, but it enables us to be able to switch the signs on numbers quite easily so that we're able to produce you know, revenue as a positive number, expenses as a negative number. Okay, I'm done. So, so, yeah. Yeah. So, in order to be able to produce a set of accounts, we need to do more produce reports that looked like what I was showing earlier, we needed to make quite a, a number of changes in the financial report writer and all of that needed to be done in core and that's been an ongoing project and it's, and it's largely done now but uh, I don't know if we scroll up a fraction more. This has 
been a long, a long-running project since 2015. We've been working on this. <coughs> um, go up to the top floor and tell us the top. Yeah, so. The, the difference between what we originally had in, in data or in financial report binder and, and what these changes will give us is that uh, we can now, we've made the financial report basically like an invoice or an invoice print or whatever. We have a, we have a header record which we can display, what, well, a header print format that we can display whatever we want inside it. And we have a lines print format that we can then display within it and that then allows us to allows us to produce logos and, and provide contextual information so that the financial report actually shows them the, the meaningful information. And some of these have been adopted over time, but the, these red red um, pieces of information about the changes so we can we can wrap columns and do whatever we want to do. We can we can now Tell it to produce lines under or over any of the numbers, single line, double line, whatever, so that so that we're able to produce a set of accounts that look not too bad straight out of the system without constantly being forced to stick it into Excel just so that we can tidy up the presentation. So th this is this is what we're aiming what we were aiming to be able to get to within Identity Core. So what's that? What's, what's that? <coughs> All right, okay. So, um, DPAC had produced a, a plugin recently, or I don't know how recently, but it's been available for a little while, which enables to ver very easily import, uh, import budget information which we might have in spreadsheets. So we've got a, we have a format where we've got account codes down the so left side and columns for, for months, periods, whatever. You can now just import that directly into, into IDEMCARE using the, the new bu import budgets functionality. And because of that, I was able to construct some, some information that we could then import as garden well we could import a budget and import some actuals so that we would then have within Garden World some information that actually was sufficient to be able to produce a P&L or a balance sheet that somebody looking, an accountant looking at it would actually understand. So this is a, this is a report which is using the additional data that I've imported into Garden World, which hopefully we'll be able to have in standard Garden World so it's available to everybody. And these are, and this is using a new feature that was in there that enables us to define what's to go in each column. So this is a, so this is, sorry, I'm moving. So I, I, I've imported some actual information and I've imported some budget information. So now, we can have a report which shows, you know, an actual for the month, budget for the month, bearings for the month, and the same for the Q, uh, for the year to date. And and the other thing that it enabled us to fix was that you can see here that we have a revenue of eleven thousand nine hundred and a budget of eleven thousand two hundred. So we have a favourable bearings of six seventy five. And and in the cost of sales, the cost of sales is greater than, the actual cost of sales is greater than the budget, and now we have an adverse variance, and, and therefore the variance on the margin is 334. Up until these recent changes, it wasn't possible to get these signs correct, so that was one of the major changes that we <coughs> added into the system. Um, can you go on to the next slide for me? Yes. Nick. And it, this is just a, a little more of the extra capability that we that we have with the changes in the financial report, right? But we can say, well, I want a report which has which has columns for HQ, Central, East, and Store, and we added um, the report source information that was on the on, on the the lines, the uh, the financial report writer lines. You know, the third tab. 
we also added that to the column definition and that's and that extra capability is what allows us to say, well I want a, I want one column for HQ, one for central, one for east, one for north, and a total. And if we have a hidden summary of these, we can subtract that from the total to find out if there's any information in any other column in any other report that's not specifically identified. And what else? And we can also do other things with this new capability. So for Central, we can say, well, go and find any sales that we've made to either HQ, East, North, or whatever, and, do, and subtract them so that we can produce we can re re produce reports that eliminate intercompany transactions, so, which is a common requirement for accountants to be able to manage. So we have some capability of doing that. So this here is saying, well, go and find me any site, anything that was in the revenue area where the business partner was the business partner for organisation these North or HQ, and then figure out what that total is and then subtract it from our previous time. Turn the next one. And this is uh, just put up here in case it's of, of use to others, but one of the difficulties that the boys seem to have with, for instance, producing balance sheets or trial balance is that it was very difficult to actually uh, to get a balance sheet that balanced if you hadn't, if you weren't in that ideal moment where you've just done your year in journal entries so that the sum of all the P&L accounts balanced to zero and the, and the sum of Yeah, so it was difficult to produce a, a balance sheet where it didn't matter when you printed it, it always was correct and, and, the, and the numbers always added up so that uh, we weren't embarrassed by it. And this is, this is just a technique that has been developed over time to enable us to overcome that problem. But I'm not sure many other people have ever been exposed to it. But what, what it does is um, it works out Tell me every sum everything that's in the in the PL accounts that are for you know forever. And now sum everything that's in the PL accounts for the current financial year. And if there's a difference, that difference is a transaction that really, that, that difference is the prior year profits that are yet to be transferred across to the retained earnings. So if you put some lines in to pick up then can you scroll up? Yeah, so, so in fact, in order to produce a balance sheet that always balances regardless of when you print it, you need two lines. You need, you need to be able to see the current year-to-date result, but you also need to be able to see is there something still hanging around in the P&L accounts for the prior years that haven't yet been transferred to retained earnings. And if there are, you can calculate it and display it, and this then make sure that your balance sheet always balances. Go on to the next. Yes. So with the with all the extra data that was imported into into Garden World, we're able to run a balance sheet now in and you can see that we now have a balance sheet where the the net assets The shareholders' funds. I can't see the numbers. Can we go down a bit more? So, net assets is equal to shareholders' funds, and it's always going to be equal to shareholders' funds, regardless of when you print a report or whether you have or haven't done in the year in January. <coughs> and also, we we're able to use all of the underlining and so forth that's being added back into the core so that we can get a halfway reasonable looking document without having to manipulate it in Excel. So this is this is just a this is a trial balance, which is something that people always seem to have difficulty being able to produce, but trial balance is essentially just the same as a balance sheet. 
and if we scroll up a fraction, <coughs> sorry, that down, I wanted to see that, no, up. <coughs> Yeah, now, this is a, just the same technique. You know, when you produce control balance, you need to find is there anything that has, that was in the PL accounts in prior years that hasn't been transferred, and you need to insert a line for it. And you can, you can see here that it's saying, well, the sum of all the balance sheet accounts is equal to the third grand. And if you scroll to the bottom now, the, the, the sum of all the uh, P and L accounts is also thirty thousand. Next one. Or is that it? That's it. Yeah. All right. So I guess the takeaway <coughs> the takeaway from, from this part is that we with the modifications for Garden World and the extra data that we put in and the other thing we did with the with the data was that every every transaction that was back in 2003 and 2004 or whenever has now been redated it, it just with a, a database function so that uh, it's all in the current year so we will have the capability of regardless of what year it is whether it's two or three years in the future you can just execute it execute some process and suddenly all of your garden <coughs> your garden world data will suddenly be for 2025 rather than 2003. So it won't look so stupid if you're showing it to, to prospects. discussion that we were hoping to have and it's uh, and it's it's long been a thorn in everyone's side I'm sure which is if we've got if we've got missing functionality in the application how should it be how should it be added in should it be should it be added in by a plugin should it be added in by change to the core and the answer is obviously well some should be by changes to the core some should be by plug-in, so then we have to try and figure out, well, how do we determine which things are going to be considered by a group uh, to be changes that should go into the core, and how do we organise that? Because the, the easiest thing for everybody is to say, uh, well, I need something, I don't want to be reliant on others, I can't wait for changes to the core, I'll just create it as a plug-in. So, so, anyway, the, these were some of the questions that that arise in the in the context of deciding whether it should be a plug-in and whether it's my, or whether it's the change to core. And only yesterday I saw another one. Norbert was showing us all of his nice ability to be able to zoom to underlying transactions, and he will no doubt. I don't know whether that will go into core or not, but we've had exactly the same exactly the same functionality that looks slightly different. <coughs> Right, so we, we constantly run the risk of having people reinventing the wheel all the time, then having to later decide, well, which version of the functionality should we make available because we don't want to be training people to use different versions and different screens to achieve the same result. And that's exactly what we had with what uh, Norbert had done and what, what, what we had done. Can you go up for me? So I tried to go through and look at well, what, are, what are some of the things that would identify or uh, give a clue as to wh whether something was appropriate to go in by into core or whether it should still continue to be done by parking. <coughs> and these were so and these were examples, things like manufacturing, we might have manufacturing version A and manufacturing version B. That exactly is what we want to play in for. Maybe the same applies for a POS system. But then if we can go to the next part. So 
and these were these were examples of of some matters where it was sim some things where it's simply in inappropriate for it to go into anything but core, and then others where well you could go either way, and you have to figure out well which way which way you're going to achieve it. So this was a this was what Norbert, uh, what's similar to what Norbert was talking about yesterday is that we constantly get complaints from customers saying, I'm in, the I'm in the business partner window, why do I need to go back to the menu just so that I can find out some additional information about this business partner? Why do I need to change my context and have all these other mouse groups? So our approach to fixing that some years ago was to simply add buttons inside the business partner customer and the business partner vendor and you could just click on the buttons and it would then produce an aging report or a, an open items report or you know any report that you wanted an unapplied payments report for that business partner direct, directly from in the business partner window and it just simply used the context information to pass across into the standard but the standard identity areas of reports, so they they were fired. The standard reports are fired automatically from inside the business partner, and bring back a report only for that business partner. <coughs> and 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 here was a, here was another another thing that's sort of like an edge an edge case. So. One of the things that was always a pain is that we have no capability to be able to send a remittance device out to everybody who got paid, say, in a single payment selection. We clearly need, we clearly need a process in the system that we can say, you know, send remittance, I've paid everyone, now send them their remittance advice. But, and and that, is, that's a, that would be a standalone, a standalone report, report and process and wouldn't uh, wouldn't cause a problem to add to the system. But the original Compier setup had no ability to, to easily show you, well, you know, where's the statement going to be sent to? Which, which user is it going to go to? What, what email address is it going to go out on? So we, we had some time ago just added on the, bit, on the, on the customer tab and the, and the vendor tab an ability to be able to nominate a user who was to receive remittance advices and, a nom and directly nominate a user who was going to receive remittance advices. That's going to be a change that does affect what's going on in the rest of the, in the, rest of the system. So we've got the ability to send the remittance advices. No, not a problem, doesn't affect anything else, but it has a dependency on the change that we have to make back into the, into the rest of the application. Some missing functionality, but it, it is something that probably of relevance to every every user of Identia anywhere. So clearly, something that should go into the core. But here, here's an example in the, in the standard system. If we have somebody who's got a uh, a credit limit of ten thousand and they have five thousand dollars outstanding, they're not on credit hold. They're not even on credit hold with that 5,000 in that standing six months. It just doesn't make any sense. Right? So we had added extra information, so we, we would now say, well, this is the maximum number of days that they're allowed to have anything overdue before they go on to credit hold. And this is the amount of grace that we're going to give them so we don't put an important customer on credit hold just because they've got $100 outstanding. It's sort of change that clearly needs to go into core, I think. Just go, up one, go, go down, further down in the document. Oh, not quite that far. Yeah, so, oh, this, uh, 
no, yeah, just a little bit there for a second. So, so he, here, uh, this is this, this is just an example of the reports that we that we added ages ago to be fired off for an individual business partner directly from it in within the business partner window. It's just a simple ID change, you know? no, no no complexity about it at all. But but it's functionality which. What I would contend is something that should be in the core application. Shouldn't be shouldn't be delivered by a plugin, so that somebody needs to be able to install the install the core application, plus twenty or thirty plugins, just so that they can get access to functionality that we would anticipate would be in, in any ERP system. And that and that's been my complaint about the idea of plugins for a long time. So if we could go further down in the document. Go down further down. Yeah. So it's, yes, this is the number three. It's not something that is of interest. So years ago, we added the ability to uh, be able to calculate a report cube, and we were able to utilise that report cube in the financial report. So you might, so you might, for instance, have a report cube which is based on organisation plus account code, and you might have five million transactions in there, but it might sum down to maybe only 1,000 lines in the report cube, which is based on organisation and account. And therefore the financial report, when it ran, only needed to look at a thousand rows of data rather than possibly millions of rows of data. But, and that's, that's been in the system for, for some time. But what was never in the system was and understanding, well, you know, this, this cube data is really useful. I can create, define a cube which is based on, on business partner or product or, you know, any, any of the accounting dimensions. And I can use that information to be able to do any form of analysis that I want. You know, dump it into a spreadsheet, re manipulate it with pivot tables, however you want to be able to do that. We had no cap we have no report in Identia that enables us to easily extract the data that's in the queue. So this is something that we added for ourselves ages ago so that we can always get that, that information. And as an accountant, I'm, I'm using this all the time. It's almost, it's almost one of the most critically useful pieces of capability for an accountant that's in the system. And we don't have it. And you know, it's a simple reporting process. <laughs> So should that simple report and process be added as something that's in the core application or we're going to create it as a plugin and then find that 90% of the installations don't know about it and haven't applied it? And that's fundamentally the, the issue. Um, I won't go through that, but if, you, if you've ever had to spend time working with the financial reports, um, you often find that you have to create a report line set where you're cherry picking individual account codes and in order to be able to know whether you've got everything you need to have there, you need to be able to work out some control totals to say, well, I know what my report I know what I wanted my report to do. All of the transactions that I expect to be there should <laughs> add up to this amount of money. Does my report add up to that amount of money? And so so having the ability to dump information that's already pr heavily pre-summarised gives an accountant a, a great ability to be able to check the financial reports to see whether something would have gone wrong in the financial reports. It could be that a user has added a new general ledger account and they've not put it into the tree or they've added it in the balance sheet ex section or rather than the P&L section or they've got their wrong account the wrong account code or account type selected against the against the account element. Now, all of those things can conspire to uh, cause your financial reports to not produce the numbers that they they should produce. And having this type of capability finally gives you some ability to check what the that the number that the financial report produces is what it should be producing. Again. Core? Is it is it something that we should put into core? Is it something that should only be available by plugin? Can we go off the we go to the next section. So, so this was just gathering my notes, but uh, 
if you just go a fraction. No. Up, go. I want to see up here. Yeah. So this is just a just an addition of yet another field in the uh, in, in, in the business partner vendor area. Just so that we can nominate that Joe Sales is going to receive any remittance advice we send out. And <coughs> I want to see a bit lower down. No, no it is. Yeah, and then this is just the process to initiate the, a mail out of all the remittance advices to the to, to the people who've um, been paid in a particular payment selection, and that's and that's a plugin that's been available for use in Idempia for some while, but uh, but it hadn't been made public. It wasn't on the list. Nobody would have known that it existed. Somebody else has probably built something <laughs> equivalent, you know, so we're duplicating effort. Well, maybe we could go down a little bit. And so this, this, this is just an example of other functionality which we have built because customers have demanded it of us. But um, what, it, what it's called is a drillable troll balance. And if we, yeah. So in this drillable troll balance, you can select information that relates to one or multiple organisations. Say we want to look for a particular period and for a particular set of accounts, and we want to compare that data against a particular budget, and it will then display on the screen in a form what the actual for the period is, the budget for the period, the variance for the period, and the same for the year to date. And the the advantage of it to say the finance guy who's who's trying to deal with all of this is they can display that information on their screen and and any of those numbers like this number here you can either tick it or right click on it and say show me what makes up that one hundred dollars and it will then fire off a fire off a a GL transaction report because we may have an opening balance on the cumulative on the, if we'd selected a cumulative number, we've got an opening balance plus transactions for the month. And then, having created automatically the report, under what we've done, you can just always click on the search thing that displays on, on the line, and it will immediately open the underlying document, rather than the standard functionality which will open up the accounting fact window and then you've got yet another clip in order to go to the underlying document which is exactly the same thing that you were doing as well wasn't it okay let's scroll down a bit more. Um, same same issue applies in in, uh, in in any document where we want to get to the underlying document we don't want to have too many stop me there and we don't want to have too many mouse clicks and annoy the user with it so here, this was this was the import budget plugin that was created by DPAC, but I don't think anybody has anybody ever used this plugin. Yeah. yeah. So you, you, from an accountant's perspective, there's nothing more fundamental than the ability to be able to simply import a, a budget, right? And we don't have it. I've, I've, me, uh, all of the managers have given me all their information in spreadsheets. I've consolidated all their information. I now have a, I now have a budget for the year that's all in a spreadsheet. I've got account codes down the side, and I've got periods across the top. How do I get it into Idempia? No way to do it without lots and lots of manipulation to convert each period into its own separate general ledger journal and, and then be able to import it that way. So this was this was uh, a chain and improvement to enable us to do that. We can we now have a, an input budgets table, and we have the ability to take simple budget information and if you could scroll down a bit, read it into the input, the define an import later format, read it into the input table, go down to that system, and then. When you, and then when you want to import that budget information, it just runs a process and you can say, well, the, the first period that's in my budget data, I want it to go in this month. And 
I only want to put the first three months in because I'm not certain about the next nine or I might be trying to produce a composite which is made up of so many months of a forecast that we've now redone across the last six months of the budget. So you can use that to be able to populate a, a new budget with a mixture of existing budget information plus the new forecast. And then it just it runs through and it just creates a, creates a, a general ledger journal batch automatically and then, then you just need to complete it and suddenly you've got budgets available. And if you've got budgets available, as we now have, say, in the garden world data, now we have enough information so that we can produce a garden world P&L which, <coughs> which shows a, an accountant what he expects to see. He wants to see period budget variance. We haven't had that information up until recently, nor even an easy way to get it in there. So this is, a, again, this is all, all going back to this question. Well, it's useful functionality. How are we going to make it available? Is it to be, is it to be in the core? Is it to be always to be a plug-in? Or is it irrelevant to every other user? No one cares. Move on. So anyway, that was the end of my examples about it. And the reason that we, the reason that Carlos and I are both involved in, in this as, in this aspect of it is that, of course, uh, any any suggestion by me that something should go into the core is, is dead easy for me to make. I don't have to deliver it, right? and we have to decide where our resources are going to be best applied, and where they need, and where there's a change that is that a whole group of users or you know, people who are reviewing it agree should be a change that goes in the core. How are we going to fund that change to be made? And how are we going to how are we going to agree exactly what it should look like? Like we're going to use would we use my way of being able to automatically drill to a financial drill to a report for a business partner? <coughs> or should we should we be using other people's equivalent functionality because we certainly don't want to have it able to be done in multiple ways because it appears in plugins and everyone who's built their plugin has built it to work in a different function. So so I guess it was meant to be a, a discussion rather than a presentation about these things and, and the discussion element of it I believe is well what do we want to do about improving functionality that's in the core, how do we identify which things are candidates to go in the core and, and what's the best option for putting it in there, you know, we, we, which, which version of the functionality is the best one for, for us to take up into the core if we've got multiple candidates from existing plugins and, and how are we going to fund it? So, and you probably have some th views on all the work that I'm just going to give to you and say, well, that my part's done. Over to you, Carlos. Yeah. Hey, hello. <coughs> yeah, I, I don't know. I feel like we are really open for new functionality when people suggest something new. Uh, Nicolas, for example, does it permanently. Yeah, Nicolas, because goes to Mattermost and he does the question every time. My customer needs this, is this core or plugin? Or what, what must I do? And most of the time people say, hey, I have the same and with a slight difference. And sometimes Nicholas says, okay, I can do it and add that difference so it covers two use cases, two use cases instead of one, and he just do it, yeah. But I feel like many implementers just don't do that process. Don't, don't propose, don't speak. Just do the plugin, solve the problem, and say, in future I will consider proposing, and that doesn't happen. Yeah, it's a to do. That doesn't happen later. That's my feeling. Yeah. Probably there are, I don't know, 
hear about uh, that is being stopped in cost increase, yeah, is another <coughs> topic there, yeah. You you mentioned here. Yeah, How is the cost of funded. doing? Okay. Doing doing a plugin is cheaper than writing for code because it takes more time. You need to gather opinions from others, and and sometimes the solution becomes more complex. So it raises the cost of development. So I think in some ways, what can we do for encourage more this process of adding functionalities to to code? Yeah? Uh, we, uh, in terms of Hengsin and Carlos, I think we are a bit uh, like gatekeepers is to avoid bad quality or duplicated things, yeah? When somebody proposes something that is already done or is proposed in another way, then we stop it, yeah? Like, like single sign on that. There were two proposals at the same time. Uh, and we simply analyzed the both proposals and chose one. Yeah? But it was not. No. Okay. My idea and my experience is we are did a lot of uh, commits in the last year. And uh, the most important uh, and the good example is Nicolas to recognize the patterns, uh, development patterns, how avoid to make duplicates like I think it doesn't have a good uh, notification engine, I like uh, notification by SMS or interfaces or emails. But if you recognize this, but okay, because sometimes the developers can be a tailor-made solution for solving one problem. For example, import budget cannot be generalized because you need to denormalize the table, make an import, and pass it to the right place. But uh, for example, UI UX based uh, features should be generalized, but we need to find the patterns and many people need to learn this uh, this is architect uh, approach. And to write plugin, it's easier because you don't need to follow uh, core uh, principles. You, um, I don't want to say many people don't understand the full system, but exactly if you are working a lot with core and a lot with core team, like uh, we are working with uh, like Peter, our Peter now uh, working on the record editor for uh, for IDPR, uh, where you will uh, be able to like use case CRM. We found the pattern how we can connect any record with other. If you are on the lead and you want to connect activity, then you don't need to add the field. You simply make the record selection. If you have a wrong code. Let's say if you have an um, old approach, then you seem to add 10, field, 10 fields, which is not uh, good, and a lot of foreign keys. So if you found this pattern, then after that we can use this record editor in many areas, like vertical areas in CRM, PSA, and other places. So that is the hard part of this. I mean. You say that the number of commits that were made is a, is a good guide as to how somebody is active and whether something should be considered for. Okay. Can you speak louder? Yeah, I'm sorry. sorry. You take the dead one. Yeah. Your, your function, you, you're, you're talking about commits as being something that um, is part of the process of understanding what should be going in considered to go into the application. How many commits should this accountant have done to get his ideas considered for inclusion in the in, in the core product? And it sort of it, it leads to the possibly a follow-on to the same discussion that we were having yesterday about documentation. As far as I can see, we don't have a well-defined process to be able to put something forward as a as, as a candidate to go into core, have a process by which multiple people can review it and give feedback and suggest improvements. So much of what is goes into core 
is going to happen by informal communications between people who are active developers and know what they're talking about, come up with really good ideas. But because we don't have a means by, by for instance, a non a non programmer can get themselves involved in that chain of things that a whole raft of opportunities probably never get considered. And, and that's what I think is one of our failures of processes that we don't have a means to be able to formally accept and review proposals and then decide what does and doesn't go into court. Yeah. Like, uh, what I feel is Nic Nicholas follows this process frequently about functional stuff, and Norbert mm -hmm. is also permanently, but Norbert mm -hmm. is more focused on improving the framework more than functional stuff. It's like the code, the framework, you yeah, are doing improvements for that. The reason is uh, because we are running uh, multi-tenant systems, and that's why mm -hmm. And uh, the worst uh, I hate is, okay, the technology is important, the important part, but uh, for example, reusability of print formats or window customization or, uh, or uh, dashboards, it's really important because you can save a lot of time when you implement a customer. But there is a common thing there. Mm -hmm. Norbert and Nicolas both uses Mattermost. Uh, and every time create a web, and we, we have established an informal standard, yeah? yeah? We start topic, and it's write a topic header in bold letters, yeah. and then start a thread, and, and we explain what is the topic about, and wait for opinions. That is how you yeah. and Nicholas works mostly. And sometimes nobody answers. Yeah, yeah. And but, uh, but then I'm disturbing. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Nico, Nicolas sometimes asks me, yeah, Carlos, please, what do you think about this? Or, or Norbert, or Carlos, Hansi, everybody, what, what do you think? Yeah, but so then I watch the Facebook and Carlos somewhere in the <laughs> USA and uh, Las Vegas and all. <laughs> uh, maybe one idea is, uh, which is, Maybe we should think of it because many times how the new features and patterns come in to our eye, uh, our ideas, and how we can uh, process it or or, come in or find a way how to get into the core. The one is, let's say, VPAC, or we also have a solution which is complex at working at customer. We, we create the prototype or the production working. But yes, many times we haven't enough time to make it everything mm, according to the core principles. But also, if we start something, we are always create for first pull request, but before we should create the prototype, uh, the document, because we are using Wiki only for document after development. But we are not working, uh, the matter was replacing this because if I am not sure on some patterns or some uh, core functionalities, I'm opening the thread before I'm creating the ticket and asking Carlos or Hengsin or, or Deepak or other people what they think about that. But the process to create, find the pattern, make it more generic and save time and uh, raise up in As I said yesterday, more usable software. We need to talk, talk before we start the development. Like a record with the editor, we create a working mock-up where you can see what is our idea. This took, let's say, five hours to make uh, an Adobe XD, the design, and then you recognize ah, what we want. So this process is a bit uh, uh, missing, or we can improve this. So before we develop something, we should talk about it, and this should always avoid to make the duplicate solution. Or as you thought, there are two SSO solutions, we can find the best. For example, costing. I, uh, somebody opened the costing topic, 
And uh, we we all we already has a, a, a costing error calculation, so we can reproduce uh, five years costing backlog and get it. Uh, typically, we are doing it in one month in the lab, latest trailer. But many people wrote, we have this, 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 and we have the same solution. And now we start to discuss. Okay, thanks in talk. This is something we need into the core. Recalculate costing because the costing voted then everything is wrong, everything doesn't work at all. And now the question is, okay, if we have four solutions, how to find the best one? Who decide on that? We need to collect, I'm wrote there, okay, please send all solutions, nobody send it. I'm not prepared mine, because we have a pipe. And after that we need somehow to make the space on the wiki, where we collect the design, the design phase, and if the core developers agree and uh, we find the right pattern, then we validate by people you are using for, like uh, uh, Deepak, uh, the costing, or uh, uh, Steven. Then after that, we say, okay, we can do this. But to start the development first, try to make pull request, and you say me, or Hanks in, please rewrite this fully, then this is also not cost effective. Because we started the game. <coughs> we are not uh, perfect, we are, don't know all standards. I just uh, want to try to say uh, this process should be yes, more standardized and uh, we need to open space for this. <coughs> there, are, there are small problems that are matter most and there are big problems that require specifications and <coughs> more work. So, so I think, I think we're <coughs> Mm -hmm. yeah. So, like, uh, uh, you want our experience, like when we are planning the uh, major features, we uh, normally write a design in the TV, uh, and see and Carlos with you, okay. and then we go for a development. But that is not means that there is no rework, because what is happened in the SSO, for example, you want the design was proposed earlier to first, right? Uh, yeah, once we develop it now, like, uh, like some uh, nice to have for uh, the same the same you are considering like uh, some issues, right, with the design. So we have to, I think, three yeah. interests yeah. 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 have. So I think we have a chance that we want to say one last one. Well, I want to get away a little bit from the developer's perspective, the design perspective. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's also a perspective of uh, the functional business process. No? Yeah. So I, I think a basic idea would be that everything which you are justified to expect as base functionality should be in core. I mean, you don't want to get into a situation where you have must-have plugins. No? So it's not enough anymore to say I'm on version 7.1, but also on version plugin so and so, financial plugin so and so and so. So a subhead this issue that they wanted to separate designs now with business uh, process extensions, and now you're, you're on this version and this plugin and this extension and this extension, and you have a whole list of what combination you anyway have to set must have. Yeah. There's no choices. There's no additional functionality. And from the business perspective, nobody understands um, why, if you have no choice, so why not have anything for? No? I mean, financial is especially, I mean, usually this is very standardized. No? I mean, if you, if, you, if, you, if you don't have these features, everybody will say it's missing. So why do you ask me to install plugins no? if I have to have it anyway? No? I, I wonder is what, what can LMPR do to make the process easier because we, we are I think we are failing at some point because this is not happening so frequently yeah? most people do just plug it, solve the problem and move, uh, move ahead yeah? and the code doesn't evolve functionally the code yeah? it, it evolves with plugins uh, and does not contribute it back yeah and it's, it's not right also sometimes plugging for something that must be in code. Yeah? Yeah. So we must be doing something wrong or we need a space or we, uh, there is something missing there, yeah? Okay. Uh, the 
we also need to define in court the plugin should be <coughs> is this only optional or the you have choices? The other thing that the other thing that I have said we have said many times is Hensin and I must not decide on everything. Yeah? We we would like to have module or functional pieces, module owners. For example, for me, Steven is has the last word on accounting. Yeah. Recently we had some discussion and Deepak said this, this, this and Steven said, I think this, and we said, oh. it's, uh, because moving down. I don't know accounting, like, not, not even close to. Un uh, yes. Uh, so for functional stuff, it's better to have a functional expert on every area that decides how to implement something. In Hensin and I take care of the technical part, yeah? the column is correct, name, uh, Etc. Yeah, but functionally must be experts for every area. And Steven is very accessible. For example, yeah, we we, we write. I, I I never contact directly Steven, but we uh, we write. Uh, there is a doubt about accounting, and maybe ask Steven our uh, opinion, and he immediately jumps in. And Gave us the opinion. Would be good if we have functional leaders uh, on every area, yeah, and, and that we can ask, that community can ask for sales process or purchase process or manufacturing or warehousing. Yes, you don't know. And you take that. Order from Hengsin and me, we, we don't, yeah, we, we don't need to take every decision, functional decision, and yeah. things that we don't know. We want either. What we like on either beer is uh, like a stable uh, framework, uh, and uh, what maybe I'm, I'm uh, I assume would be. Good to st uh, stabilize all basic functionalities like accounting and uh, like sales order, general achievement from sales orders. We switch from the form to info window. This makes it really configurable and useful. Many questions around this customization. If this will work, then uh, and our framework will be evolved like UX uh, and uh, Usability, exports, and the training, and the data learning, and so. Then after that, there are a lot of specific business features. And uh, what is the the worst should happen if somebody commit and the uh, and the uh, core developers receive the pull request, which has a good practice, a wrong practice. So to review all complex business processes like warehouse management can be very specific, very specific way, like uh, containers or handling units, automated warehouses are there. So the maintenance fee, uh, your fee and our fee, who is uh, working in core, uh, that is very increasing if we receive uh, many complex solutions. So I'm not uh, sure it is good to input into the system a big function like this. But exactly, the good plugin should be very useful. <coughs> I think we are we are at a time uh, after time, but uh, you you were raising your hand. So yeah, I just I, I would say last words, and we go to break, and maybe after break we can discuss a bit. Yeah. I don't know if we yeah, still more time for the next, but no, no, that's. Yeah. I just wanted to uh, suggest the what you have already said that you can have functional gatekeepers, functional gatekeepers for any functionality. I saw IFRS, uh, IFRS in your report. When you were printing it, it was saying IFRS. I do not think IDMPR understands what is IFRS. They don't understand IFRS 15, IFRS 16, IFRS 17. So the revenue recognition and the liabilities posting, at what point of time you need to do as per the new IFRS guideline is not understood by IDMPR. It still follows the old mechanisms of IFRS. Now, only a functional guy like you 
or uh, my customers who would have taught us, you know, we follow IFRS 15 guidelines, so put the liabilities at this point of time and put the revenue recognition only at that point of time, depending on international guidelines. Mm -hmm. I would say it's a must, uh, depending on the uh, depending on the business. And those gatekeepers are required. Other things like credit limit you want to increase by a grace period or through a workflow process is, is a debatable matter. So if you have gatekeepers like functional guys who can take views, uh, then the technical things can go. Like you are just you just also pointed out. So that's that's what I want. Thank you. Thank you. So I propose we go to break. Yeah. Yeah. If we, if you want to discuss a bit, I don't Actually, know if we have still time yeah. from the next presentation or we can do that. We can do that after next presentation because the next presentation will be online and it's 4 a.m. there. <laughs> so he's waiting. <laughs> okay. So, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.